no autopilot. Autopilot, yes. Really? Uh, so the, the autopilot, uh, when we go into port, we use the wheel, the helmsman, uh, one of the quartermasters. But when you're steaming from one A to B, uh, a person could do as good job as the autopilot for maybe five, ten minutes. But then you will start losing concentration. The autopilot do the opposite. That collect all the information about the waves, the speed, and so on, and that use less and less uh, rudder orders. So you are actually reducing the fuel consumption by doing it. Yeah. Oh, Captain. This question is related to the technology of the ship. Your security system is equipped with 1,500 CCTV cameras. <laughs> When photographers take pictures of the guests on board, facial recognition software is used to sort the photos. Has security ever had an instance where facial recognition software was used to sort through video footage, like, for instance, in the event of a robbery? First of all, I have now worked there for 26 years, and we haven't had robbery. We have had people that have had theft and so on, and uh, we have gone back on the cameras, and we have found it, and we have, uh, yeah, dealt with those people. And uh, so uh, the cameras, it's uh, the facial recognition is a program that they use, the photographers and their system. Uh, we don't have on the security system, we don't have facial recognition. But if any accidents, uh, incidents happen around the ship, then we can go back and we can track them, where they've been and so on. So the only place we can track you in, in is into your bathroom and your stage room. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but uh, one of the things that I really like with this ship, where we have a lot of cameras, is for instance, we have teenagers. And teenagers sometimes, they, they have to be in, uh, with their parents or in the stage room by one o'clock. And uh, on some of the other ships where we didn't have as good coverage, uh, the parents waked up at two o'clock, the kids was not home yet, or three or whatever, and then uh, we had to do announcement in the middle of the night. Here we usually find them, then we track them, and we see where they went, and uh, then we can knock on the door and say, go home to your mom and dad. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't, they don't become as famous as they using them to do in the old days. You remember that, Jeffrey? Uh, yeah. I, have, I have one more question. Yeah? During the all-access tour, the engine control room um, director, Lezek Smolenski, said that people have jumped overboard and that you had to add a more CCTV cameras on the side of the ship and that they'll soon be upgraded to detect motion of falling objects, but that right now the waves on the side of the ship triggers the motion detection. I was wondering how your crew is able to deal with a man overboard situation considering you've had four instances in the past two years like, do you have a jail on board to detain the person, or are they like arrested and charged back at the port? So, uh, we haven't had four, to my knowledge, we have only had two, two instances. Uh, one I was on board on, and that was a gentleman that was, yeah, he wanted to help our cleaners to clean the bathroom and so on, so the security guided him back to the state room, and, uh, the parents and so on took care of him, and then later in the night he went out again. He climbed through the railing up on top of the lifeboat and was sitting there. It was a beautiful night. And <laughs> then you can see him on the cameras that he's standing up. We don't know if he jumped or if he just stood up and slided. We found his telephone. There. And then uh, the next day he wasn't uh, reported missing. And uh, then the uh, next day we got a call from another ship that was passing behind us. They had some guest that was out drinking coffee early in the morning. They heard him scream and they picked him up. Uh, it was a beautiful night. And, uh, the, the <laughs> now the reason I'm emphasizing on that because the next day in the newspapers it stood that he was taken, washed overboard by a huge wave. <laughs> 
you know, that needs to be a huge trade off to get to the right place. So, don't, don't believe everything you hear here in the news. Um, so that's one part of it. When it comes to cameras, um, there is some system now that detects things on the side. The problem with it is, if you wave your hand, that gets detected. If you have a bird flying by, that gets detected. So there's so much getting detected. So when you have hundreds and hundreds of alarms, it doesn't do you very So we waiting for a system that's going to be better, so we can actually say when there is somebody of a certain size and so on going overboard. But what we do is we have the cameras all around the ship, and those cameras will then, when we get the, that somebody is missing, we can track, see what took place, when it happened. So instead of maybe start searching at that time, we will have the time they went overboard, so we can steam to that position, start the search from that position. And then we're using our rescue boats, and. If somebody is missing at sea, all the other ships in the area will help with the search as well. And then it will be reported to the local authorities, and normally they will call the policy commander that organizing the search for the person. So there's no arrest or anything? If there is something happening that is not uh, legally, then it will be an arrest. So we will, we work closely with F uh, FBI, we work closely with the local police in each port. So it, depending on where you are, but if it's in international water or close to the, uh, the US, then it goes to the FBI and they will investigate the cases. Uh, if somebody misbehave on board, we have two jails, so uh, we can have them on each in one. Very seldom we use it. Uh, what we do is we confine people to their state rooms. Uh, as long as they are not a danger for themselves. The, the, the jail is more used for if people could hurt themselves, mm -hmm. then we, because there is protected, uh, there is not much in those cells. So, so then they are more protected there. But very seldom it happened. It happens sometimes that the people are confined to their state rooms. Yes, Depending on the severity, it will be, it always gets reported to the police and so on, but Sometimes they have to leave the ship because we do not accept that one person or so ruin the vacation for a lot of other people. Yeah. Thank you. Please don't laugh at my question. It's going to be funny. I am new and you're going to probably laugh. But um, I have been on five cruises. I'd like to know why they're so tall why don't they go like that? I don't like They're so tall up. How far down do they go? And what makes us stay in that upright position? That, that's not the, that, that's not the you, you are one of the hundred of people that have asked me the same question. And uh, so, Oasis of the Sea is 30 feet below the water surface, 235 feet up in the air but she's also 247 meters at the widest at the water surface. So there's, we have very good stability. And when we build this ship, even if I live on deck number 12, my weight doesn't count that much because we have so much heavy on the lower part of the ship. So you have all the tanks with the fuel, you have the engines and separators and air conditioning units and so on. And then as we build the ship higher, you have less weight. Actually, a lot of the structure and so on, on the, up by the pools and so on, is in aluminium to have less weight. So this ship actually can go 45 degrees over Whoa. and still come back. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe to my channel.